Hi, and welcome to Talk RX with Dr. Neha. I'd like to have a few interactive vlogs where I answer some questions that people are starting to write in and you start to think about the friends and family and bosses and colleagues and neighbors around you and what kind of communication questions you might have to ask me as well. So as you listen to this question that came in, uh, I'd like you to be thinking about your life as well. And at the end, I'll ask you for that opportunity to also share those questions with me and maybe you'll be the next question. Uh, that I ask. So here is a question that came in about family. So it says, my sister-in-law and I butt heads at every family dinner and it's just driving me crazy. Now I love my brother so much and I want family harmony, but she makes such underhanded and passive aggressive comments that I don't know how to handle them. So I leave feeling infuriated and an example of this is last weekend when the Johnsons came over, she then said to me, well, the Johnsons really liked you, but of course they've only just met you. So they don't really know you. What should I say the next time she does this? Now, this is a great question because it speaks to several dynamics. First of all, first of all, the age old dilemma of in-laws, right? Culturally in the Indian society, I have also seen many Bollywood movies made on in-laws not liking, you know, who their son or daughter married. Um, it creates a lot of drama, except what I want you to remember is if you're struggling with an in-law in your life, remember one thing you definitely have in common is that you love almost the most in the world. You love the same person. So for this person who was writing in, she loves her brother. She's struggling with her sister-in-law, but what she has in common with her sister-in-law for sure is that one of the people she loves most in the world, they both share and they probably both love equally. Now, the second thing you want to remember is it's true that sometimes the in-law experience of, Hey, now your family can feel a little awkward, right? And so, here, her sister-in-law is trying to give her a, com a compliment by saying something like, Hey, the Johnsons really like you. Um, and we might be able to chalk it up to awkwardness that she does that whole backhanded piece that says, but they don't really know you because they just met you. It might be her own discomfort, or it may just be a truly conscious backhanded comment. So what you want to do is you want to ch check it out. So how you would answer something like this is you would, I'm going to make up her name. I'm going to say her name is Susie, right? So what you would want to do is you'd want to set up the conversation for success. So you'd say, Hey Susie, um, it was, I know we just saw each other yesterday at dinner and there's something that, uh, I've been thinking about that's been on my mind and I'd love to talk to you about it. It'll take 10 minutes. When's a good time for you? So you always want to give her a heads up. And once she says, you know, today at four o'clock would be great. Why don't I give you a call? Once you're on the phone with her, what you do is you just state what you heard and then you get curious. So it would be something like this yesterday, you know, when you said, Hey, the Johnsons really liked you. Um, but it was the first time they met you. They don't really know you. What did you mean by that? And then you have to manage your own body's discomfort as you're trying to breathe and calm yourself down as you listen to what her interpretation was. Now let's say she says, Oh, I didn't really mean anything by that. What you can say is, well, I noticed when you said that, that I was really appreciative that you relate to me, that the Johnsons really liked me. And then when you went on to say, but they don't really know you, um, it's the first time they've met you. What it seemed like was that that wasn't very genuine. Like the compliment wasn't very genuine, or maybe I need to read something more into this because if they actually do get to know me, maybe they wouldn't like me. So was there any other meaning that you were trying to get across or something you and I need to talk about, or, you know, is there anything else? And depending on what she says, you'll have your answer. And she may just say, no, no, no. You know, what I meant was nothing. I didn't mean anything by that. And your job now is to believe her. But one thing you want to know is you want to feel confident that when something like that comes up, you have the skills to go ahead and have a talk with someone. Now, the part that I left out 
was the piece about all the judgments you might have about her. What did you mean by that? You don't really like me, do you? Um, you're just trying to be a jerk. All those types of thoughts, you wanna leave those out. The ones that you wanna to talk to someone about are, hey, this is what I heard, this is what you said to me. Can you tell me what happened? And I call that the curiosity tool. So if you're interested in learning more about this, uh, in my book, it's actually in chapter one, and it's called the curiosity tool. How do you actually take a situation, kind of take out the judgments, thoughts, opinions, beliefs about it, and actually connect to someone? So I hope that that was uh, helpful. And yes, please have that conversation with your sister-in-law. I'm pretty sure either she didn't mean anything negative by it, she might have felt awkward, or if there is something underneath, you want to be the one who opens up the dialogue to having a good conversation about it. Because the truth is, your brother's going to be in both of your lives for a long time.